okay, I want to be mindful of your time and it is six o'clock right now. So I think I'll start and I'll make sure if anyone else joins to, to make sure that they enter the Zoom room. So again, thank you for being here. Uh, an introduction. My name is Kat Klingseis. I am a transfer admissions counselor for pretty much for anyone who is coming from a school that is not in the state of Iowa. So if that's you, then I am your admissions counselor. I also work with two other admissions counselors. One works with students who are specifically in uh, a community college named uh, Des Moines Area Community College, which is uh, our largest uh, partner community college. And then we also have a, another person who works with um, all the other different student transfer students who are coming from Iowa. So that's our staff. Um, I, I will say just kind of another uh, point is that I have muted everyone um, for now. If you have questions, feel, feel free to uh, put them in the chat. I won't be able to address them while we're talking or while I'm talking, but at the very end, that will be a time for, for us to, uh, for or for me to take any questions. So, all right, I'll admit this one person and then we'll start. The other thing too, is that I am recording this meeting. So just FYI, um, it will be accessible on our, uh, the ISU admissions, uh, the ISU admissions YouTube page. So another reminder. Okay. Some of you may already know a lot about Iowa State, but I kind of wanted this presentation to be a big overview for anyone who has very little knowledge about Iowa State to people who've already been through the process, who've applied, been admitted, accepted their offer. So there's going to be a lot of information. Some of it you may already know. Hold on um, through those slides. I'll get to the slides that may be more applicable to you. But these first few slides are just simply overviews about Iowa State. So Iowa State is a four-year public university here in Iowa. It's located in Ames, Iowa, pretty much right in the middle of the state. We have 30,000 students, a little more than 30,000 students, and of those students, about 44,000 of those are transfer students. We have students from all 50 states, as well as 116 nations. A few talking points that I like to bring up to um, students is uh, the first being that we Student involvement is absolutely huge here at Iowa State. We have more than 800 student clubs and organizations. Uh, we have learning communities, some that are transfer specific. We also have Tau Sigma, which is a transfer honors society. That is um, a, a club, essentially a club that um, is for transfer students. They, they do a bunch of different uh, activities throughout the year. And then we also have the transfer center here. It's it's opened a few years ago. It's a it's where I am right now. It's a place where students can come, both prospective students and students who are are currently at Iowa State. If you ever need any assistance, you'll learn a lot of information between now and when you start, and then even after you start. So if there's ever a time when you can't remember something, just drop by. We're in the enrollment services center on campus straight across uh, uh, a field from Parks Library, pretty easy to get to. Just drop by, one of us will always be here to help you. The other thing is career services. So college is one part of your journey. Finding a job or career is, is another. And so we do definitely try to help students prepare for that. So we have some of the biggest career fairs in the country here. Um, we also have strong connections with industry leaders. They they are often um, coming. They often come onto campus either through those career fairs or for other opportunities to meet with students. And then you can see here. So we have a ninety five point five percent positive career outcomes six months post graduation. So again, that's ninety five point five percent of people who graduate have uh, 
positive career outcomes six months after that. Another thing that I think is on beautiful fall days like this, it's it's very apparent, but I would say has one of the most beautiful campuses uh, in the country. We're ranked by multiple publications as one of the most beautiful campuses. Um, if I can bring my computer outside and take this call outside so you can see all the, the fall leaves, I would, but I don't know. Don't know if that would be be the best situation, but trust me, it's beautiful. Um, the other thing too is that we we're pretty big on sports. Um, so the I think we have the football team, the men's basketball team, the women's basketball team, and I believe the cross country team are all ranked in at this very point are all ranked in the top ten in the country. I think our wrestling team is also so. We have some very strong sports here. If you would like to um, watch uh, any of those uh, games or meets or matches, there's definitely opportunities to be be involved um, with that. Again, just another <laughs> another uh, example of our of our campus. Again, this is just going over some of the some of the things that you see here. So in the top picture, you'll see that's uh, that far building with the, the white pillars. That's actually the, the building I'm currently in. Beardshear, which is where the Iowa State president, that's on the left. Um, again, just a very pretty, very open, very green campus. Then there's uh, on, the bar, the, on the bottom left, you'll see those two swans. Um, that's Lake Laverne. Those are the two swans that we had. Unfortunately, one of them passed away. And so the other one, I don't know if you know this, I didn't, but I guess swans mate for life. And so it's very difficult uh, when one passes away. So we had to send the, the swan to, uh, to a place to live, to, to mourn. Uh, and so we're, we're currently, from what I've heard, we're currently in the process of getting two more swans. And so their names are Elaine and Lancelot, Lancelot. So that's also kind of a cute thing that we have on campus. And then the picture on the right is our Campanile. There's a lot of different uh, traditions involving the Campanile. Um, one of them is mass Campanileing, where a bunch of people go and um, it sounds weird, but it's they, they kiss at the same time. And it's supposedly that makes you a true Iowa Stater if you do that. So it's a homecoming tradition. If you have not visited campus, I recommend doing so. So we offer daily visits Monday through Friday. We also have transfer student visit days, which are especially popular, obviously, for transfer students. But I think the the reason why we we recommend transfer students go to those is because they are specifically tailored for transfer students. So all the information that you would receive during those days are geared towards you. On daily visits, you would get a lot of information, some of them applicable to you, some of it, you know, not. And so if those transfer Tuesdays don't work, you can come any, really honestly, any day, any weekday for the most part, other than some holiday breaks. But we also have Experience Iowa State, which are larger events. So these are ones that have, um, you know, a, a few hundred people potentially coming to them. They are, they have offer a lot of sessions. So it kind of depends on what you're looking for. If you would like something that is specific to transfer students, a little smaller, I think Transfer Tuesdays are, are great opportunities. If you are looking for something bigger where you're able to go to several different sessions, I think Experience Iowa State is, is a good opportunity for that. All right, so this is getting into the more uh, uh, interactive, or at least for me, part of the presentation. So when you start an uh, application, you will need to make an admissions My account, and that's all, it's all online. We do not accept the Common app for transfer students. That's something that is diff different from our first year applications. And yeah, let's get right to that. All right. One second, I'm gonna stop sharing for a second.
All right. So, all right. You should all see the screen. Um, you'll see here. So how I got to this, I won't do this because I'm actually on like a test screen. So the way that you go about doing this is you would want to go to admissions, my accounts and it, you can get to it on our homepage, on any page really of our website, go admissions, my account. It's important to know that if you already applied at some point in the past, so like if you were a high school student and applied to Iowa State, you'll still have a my account, in which case you would want to click returning user. If you are new and have not ever uh, created a, uh, a my account or applied to Iowa State, you can, you should click new user. So on here, we'll go here. So I think I talk about this more and on a different slide, but it's important to know the difference between a first year student and a transfer student and then a returning student. So a transfer student is anyone who has taken, who has graduated high school and who has taken college courses after the summer following their high school graduation. So if you took summer classes and then came to Iowa State, you would still be a first year student. It's just, if you've taken classes somewhere else after the summer post high school graduation, you would be considered a transfer student. If you've ever taken classes at Iowa State, you would be considered a returning student. So those are different um, uh, important uh, differences that to keep in mind. So I'm gonna create an account. All right, and then I'm just going to do really random things here. Test, test. Now it's important to make sure before you you save anything that everything is correct on this. So there are some things that we can internally or you can change, but there are some things that are really difficult for us to change. So in, in particular, your birth date, you'll see here. So um, you may change your birth date this one side. Yeah. So just make sure on your birth date in particular, and then also your email address. So just make sure that the email address that you're using is one that you are going to check and then also have access to. Okay, so I'm gonna say no here, birth date. I'm just going to choose a random date. All right, and then another random email. I am going to have to remember this email, so I'm going to save that, copy that here, primary phone. Bold type. Something to keep in mind on this one. So we do ask if it's okay if we text you. Um, this is totally up to you. Uh, I will say that if you click no, it does prevent me from texting you. So if I have any sort of, of information for you, so say like if you're missing a transcript or if I, I, I need to tell you about a deadline, for instance, this does really limit my ability to do that. So if, if you don't want any text messages, totally understand that. But um, if you would, then you need to uh, click yes. I will say it will default to no. So that's something important to remember. Entry term. So again, so you can apply one year in advance. So right now we are open essentially from spring to 2025, which starts in January to fall 2025. We will start accepting applications for spring 2026 um, in January. So that will open up. Do fall application. US domestic versus international. So if you are an international student, you would click international. If you are a US citizen living internationally, but you are still considered uh, a permanent or a US citizen, you would be US domestic. The same goes for if you are a permanent resident of the US, um, you may be from another country, but you are a permanent resident now, you would be considered a US domestic applicant. This is the part where you would want to make sure that you are applying for the correct uh, application. So, or you, you are submitting the correct application. Again, 
transfer students, if you are, if you've taken classes after from somewhere else after the summer post high school graduation. And that also includes, I will say, military students as well. All right. So I'm just going to do academic area of interest as accounting. You can change your major before you get to Iowa State. You can change it when you're at Iowa State. This is one that you can change. Students do change often. Um, so don't, <laughs> this is actually one that, you know, it's, it is changeable. I'm going to put the address of the Enrollment Services Center. Oops. Oh, not that one. So this is a, another question related to how we contact you. I will say we don't spam you. So the information or the emails that we're sending you are, are emails about scholarships, financial aid, academics. It's, it's things that we think are, are important for you to know. So again, you have the choice if you would like to be able to get that information, you can put yes. If you don't want that, you can press no. You'll want to make sure that you have clicked that I have read and understand my privacy rights. The parent guardian information, this is optional. If you would like to have your um, a family member on your application, you can put that. Going to not say robots. Okay, my first and last name is Test Test, so, all right. Oh, wait, I can't do that. Let's do Iowa State 1. Iowa State 1. I do think I have to push the yeah. counting again. What else do I need? Special character. There we go. Iowa State 1, exclamation mark. Iowa State 1. Okay, create account. There we go. All right. That's okay. So, what we've done just kind of to go over some of the things, just I guess to rehash what we just did. So, we just created a my account. Um, so, you have a my account. The next part, which is this screen, is going to be actually applying to Iowa State. All right. So again, this kind of just goes over the difference between U.S. applicant and international applicant. This is important because we do require a few more things from our international applicants than we do our domestic applicants. So again, just important. Um, we we will catch it, uh, but just for ease and and for time, just make sure you're reading these and, and, and try to submit the application that is, that is correct. All right, so to explain more about this, the undergraduate and graduate and non-degree and re-entry applications are all very different. So if you're on this call, got an email from me, you are most likely undergraduate. You can see here the difference between the, or the, descriptions of the other three. Non-degree is probably the one that is 
question the most. And that's essentially if you don't intend to get a degree from Iowa State, but you want to take some classes from Iowa State, that's for non-degree. Again, re-entry is for former Iowa State. And then obviously graduate is for students who are seeking, who, who already have a bachelor's, who are already, uh, who are um, at this point seeking uh, a master's degree or PhD or graduate certificate. This is again, just kind of to filter your application to the transfer side. So have you, or will you take any college classes prior to enrolling at Iowa State? The next question is going to be, when do you plan to do that? Did you do that when you were in high school? Did you do that the summer immediately following high school graduation? In which case you are still a high school student, or excuse me, in, in, in that case, you are still a first time applicant, regardless of how many of how many transfer credits you are bringing over. You can even bring over, an, you can have already earned an associate's degree from a community college, uh, it doesn't matter just as long as you've are, if you took those classes during high school or the summer immediately after your graduation, you're still considered a first year student. I'm going to say after the summer, immediately following the high school graduation so that we can divert to the transfer process starts. And then this is just another, so you'll see here. So this is just, again, kind of in case you answered something incorrectly, you can see here that, you, that it's labeled as US transfer. Sorry, my computer is, is in front of the continue arrow or button. Okay, so this has all your information that, uh, again, just more questions. I'm gonna fill this out pretty quickly. So I sent emails to all non-resident students. So for here in the last 12 months, have you lived outside of Iowa? You should probably put yes. There's optional questions here, which includes gender identity, pronouns, other last name, maiden name. I will say this is important for, for people who have changed their names. Sometimes your, your transcripts will come in and they will be uh, on it will be your former name. Um, so just another reminder to include that. It's really helpful for our processing team. So sometimes we can like connect socials, but again, it's just really, it's to make everything go a little sm more smooth, put your, put whatever um, name you've, you've pre previously have gone by. I'm gonna put same here. And these are, you can see here. So most of these are, optional if you would like to put them you can better in status but all that okay so i'm going to put a probably i would imagine that this is a non-existent social this is where you can put some family members we do have a scholarship for non-resident students who have a parent or grandparent who has uh, who graduated from Iowa State. So this is kind of a part where you can put them. I am not going to put anyone, but you can you can. And this is just where you want to put your major. Something cool, too, is that if you are interested in doing, like, say, pre-law or pre-med or uh, pre-vet, this is where you can put that as well. So I'll just I'll put pre-law. The ACT, SAT, honestly, you don't, you would really only need this if you have um, fewer than 24 transfer credits. And so what that essentially means is, like, if you have fewer than 24 credits, you, we would need to see if you were admissible from high school. So you can put that if you want. We're actually test optional, so you don't have to give us your SAT, ACT. You can if you want, but we do get that question pretty frequently if you need to send it. You can, you don't have to. High school, inside the, inside the United States. I will just put my former high school. 
high school graduation. I'll put this one. <laughs> I'm a little bit older than this, but we'll put that. Have you enrolled? So this is where it asks you, have you ever enrolled in the in Iowa State University coursework? So this is kind of trying to decipher whether or not you would be considered a returning student. So I'm going to put no. And then will you have earned 24 or more credits prior to entry at Iowa State? I'll go over this in another slide, so I won't um, I won't explain too too much into detail about this, but I'll just put yes for ease. All right, so this part is where you can put in all the classes that you have taken. I will say you, you don't have to put in all the classes. So we will go in. All right, this is just uh, a school that I have in mind. So you can put in all the classes that you have taken or plan to take. I'm just going to put... Uh, have you earned a degree from this college? Let's put no. And then from there, you can put the classes. Let's just, again, for ease, let's just, just put the first one, add course. All right. I'll, I'm only going to put one, um, but you can put some. There may be, sometimes I, I'll have students that have so many that they don't have space for all of them. We will still ask for your transcripts. So if you miss some, we'll find them. So just make sure, I guess the most important thing is just make sure that you put in all the different colleges or universities you've attended. Um, but again, we have ways to, to find that out as well. Reverse credit transfer is for all Iowa community colleges and some out-of-state community colleges. It's just a way that if you want to take your credits from Iowa State and, and reverse them back to your community college to, for instance, earn an associate degree, there are options to do that. I'm going to not click anything, but you'll see here that there are some that are from out of state. Save and continue. Do you wish to receive information from ROTC? I'm gonna push no. This part I would say is not, um, always applicable to every transfer student. So this is gonna be more explaining like gaps in education, I would say. Um, you can you know, put that you were working, you can put that you were in the military, you can put um, any, sort, any sort of things you can put there just to kind of explain a, a gap. So we know, um, you know, this will help us determine whether or not there's maybe potentially you were at a different college and we need to ask for a transcript from there. This is asking you if you've ever been subject to disciplinary action uh, for scholastic or any other type of misconduct at any ed educational institution. It's important to be honest, we do find out. So um, if you have, please say yes, you will be able to provide documentation that explains yourself. But again, important to be honest. The same for this, if you have a pending criminal charge, it's important to be honest. So if you do, um, but yes, I will say misdemeanor traffic offenses. Uh, we you don't you, you do not have to put those. All right, so I am going to press yes on this. Again, it's important for you to make sure that you are answering honestly and completely when you are doing this, um, just to make sure that you know. You're not going to get in any sort of trouble or anything later. Um, we do check, you know, uh, colleges that you've attended. We do check criminal records and and those sort of things. So honesty is uh, not to sound cliche, but the, the best policy. The next part is to finalize and pay. So the application fee is $55. You pay that at the time of uh, submitting your application. And then the other important part is to send us your transcript. So any transcript or any, you will want to send transcripts from any school that you have attended, any college that you have attended previously. Even when you were in high school, if you took any dual credit, you'll want to make sure that you are um, sending us those transcripts. I'm just briefly going to stop share.
so I can pull up the PowerPoints again. Okay. I already talked about this, so I'm not going to go back and rehash what I said. But again, important to know if you are a transfer student and or if you are a first stu first year student or a re-entry returning student or a non-degree seeking student. Now, I know some of you have already applied. And so all of that that I just said were things that you probably already knew. This part is going to be about what happens after you apply. The, like I had mentioned, you will need to send us your transcripts, every single college that you've attended. We, we will admit you based on your unofficial transcripts, but we will need official transcripts before you can register for classes. So it is important to make sure that you send us, and those to, to make transcripts official, it has to come directly from your college or any sort of third party service that your college may, may use. So Parchment, National Student Clearinghouse, those are some more uh, common ones that people that schools use to send transcripts. The other important, th important thing to remember is that processing time may be up to three weeks. So right now it's kind of a busy time of year. We're getting quite a few applications. So if you have not heard back from us in two weeks, just again, it, it may not be anything bad. It just, I would first make sure if you go onto your admissions, my account, make sure that we're not requesting any sort of documentation. But if we have, if you, if everything is marked completed and we, you still have not received a response, just know that it may take up to three weeks. After three weeks, if you still haven't heard from us, then feel free. I would I would recommend reaching out. You can reach out to me and I can do a little bit more investigating. But just so everyone knows, three weeks is kind of the time frame that we are looking at right now. I said that I would talk more about the requirements. This is a slide where I will do that. Transfer GPA, you have to have a transfer GPA of at least 2.25 or a 2.0 if you have earned a associate degree. You have to also have at least 24 credits. So more specifically, you'll have to have at least 24 academic transferable credits. If you do not have that, it's, it's okay. We will look at your high school transcript and see if you are admissible out of high school. And But with that said, you also still have to have a 2.25 um, GPA. If you do not have a college GPA yet, but you are still admissible out of high school, you can still be admitted. We just have to see once your classes end, we will need to see an updated transcript. So um, don't let that hinder you from applying. If you do not have 24 credits, you can still potentially get admitted. We will take up to 16 career slash technical credits, um, but these credits do not factor into your transfer GPA or credit count. So the bullet, the previous bullet, I said 24 academic credit. Those are different than your uh, career technical credits. So career technical, just to give a couple examples, are um, maybe like medical terminology. There are some um, some HVAC uh, welding classes. Um, any of those kind of classes um, are likely considered career technical. All right, so this is the, so all my slides are done. Let me check the chat. Does anyone have any questions that I can answer? I will do, I will say my plan is to do some more. Um, I, I do plan to do some more webinars like these. So I, I'm thinking that maybe we could do one about maybe like scholarships we could do another one about our transit system. So that's a program that we have that you can look and see how your credits will transfer or should transfer to Iowa State. So that's, I think could be useful. Those 16 technical credits, it kind of depends on your major. I will say um, for 
a lot of the a lot of the majors those will simply be used they they may not go towards your your major so it kind of depends on your particular major if you have those kind of questions about whether those those credits may be applied towards your major i can direct you to someone within that particular department um how the transfer credit process works is that the office of admissions we will see whether or not your so we will create what's called a transfer credit evaluation which will tell you how your credits will um, come over to iowa state but it will be your academic department with your academic advisor who will ultimately be able to tell you how those credits will be applied towards your major so um in with your particular question that would probably be more of an academic advisor question so if you do have like specifics please let me know and I can direct you. I have a feeling with Workday, Matthew, are you a spring 2024 entry student? Spring, oh, excuse me, spring 2025. It is 2024, isn't it? Um, yeah, so I don't know. It may just be that they haven't given you access yet. So, um, I will say like orientation just started. So workday, it may not be quite configured for you yet. Um, if that's the case, then what I can do is, um, I would say, wait, uh, you can also send me an email if about that. So I haven't heard anyone talk uh, specifically about Workday for the spring semester, I'm guessing that it just hasn't been configured for you yet. Have you uh, email me, Matthew, and we'll talk. All right. And yeah, I'm definitely interested in the webinar about scholarships. I will say a couple things. So I'll, I'm going to stop sharing really quick. And then Savannah, I, I will say before I move on to talking about scholarships, just briefly, um, Savannah, would we be able to meet with advisors to talk about transferable credits after accepting the offer of admission? How it works typically, it depends. So you would you would talk with an academic advisor after you do orientation. So, but if you orientation, it depends on your term. So orientation for spring 2025, orientation has already started. So people are, I believe, are already meeting with an academic advisor to to talk about their transferable credits uh, for fall 2025. That won't really be a thing until um, orient. So orientation should launch sometime in the spring, and then you would meet with an academic advisor around then. So if you are fall 2025 and you want to talk with an academic advisor prior to that you can email me and I can kind of direct you to your particular college and see if, if if you can get in touch with someone. But that's probably, it kind of depends. So if, if you're already about to meet with your academic advisor because you've already accepted your offer and you just need to do orientation, then I would just say do orientation and then you meet with an academic advisor. Um, so yeah, so that, that would be my answer to that. So um, if you do want to reach out to someone, um, if you are fall 2025, and um, you want to reach out to them before do completing orientation, um, email me and I can put you in contact with someone. It is not too late to get in for spring of 2025. The entry term, or excuse me, the, the spring semester, I think it starts January 16th or 17th. So there's still some time. Um, I would recommend doing it sooner than later. Um, because we will need to do a few things before, um, which includes like the three weeks. So like I said, it, it may take up to three weeks. So um, it's already the end of October. So um, if you are thinking of spring 2025, I would recommend doing that um, soon. All right, I am pulling up right now information about our scholarships. I'm going to share. The easiest way to find, I should have just uh, started from the homepage. 
So the easiest way to find information about our scholarships is to go to admissions and aid and then affording college. And then you can go to scholarships. And this will list the scholarships available to students. The you'll if as a transfer student, you will want to click transfer awards. And this will show you some of the the, op, the some of the scholarships that we have. The ones that I talk about most frequently with with my students, since I work with non-resident students, is the transfer achievement award, which is for students. Click on the screen because I think it does a better job of visualizing what I'm talking about. So the Transfer Achievement Award, it is $19,500. Um, it is so that's broken up as $6,500 a year for up to three years. You have to have at least a 3.25 GP transfer GPA and then at least 30 transfer credits. Uh, I will say that this will we take all the way up to when you started at Iowa State. So if you don't yet have that 3.25, um, but at the very end, once we get your, your grades from wherever college you are in, and we see on your transcript that you do have that 3.25, or you do have 30 credits, then we will adjust your financial aid offer to reflect that transfer achievement award. So you can get that, or you can get the transfer success award, which is the, it's $9,000, it's 3,000 for up to three years, um, the, um, the requirements for that are, um, at least a 3.0 transfer GPA. There's no credit minimum. Um, so again, you can get either or the other thing. Um, yeah, Brock, I was, you read my mind. So the transfer success and the transfer achievement award, you can get either of those. You can't get both. But the those two are stackable with the Transfer Expedition Award, which is for students who are in Illinois, this, these states right up here, Illinois, Kansas, Minnesota, Missouri, Nebraska, South Dakota, or Wisconsin. And like I said, this is um, stackable. It's $2,000 for up to three years. Transfer GPA is at least 3.0. Then we have the Generations Award, which is for students. I already mentioned this in a previous slide but it's for students who have parents or grandparents who are Iowa State graduates. We will check again, we will, honesty is the best policy. We will check um, our, our records to make sure that they actually did graduate from Iowa State. The other thing I was gonna say, so Brock, you brought up a good point. So PTK, so we'll go back to this. PTK, I always talk about this because I, one, I think I, I like PTK as a, as a um, organization. But also, we have some scholarships for PTK members. So I, again, if you aren't familiar with PTK, it is a honor society at community colleges. I believe you have to have a 3.5 GPA at a, at a community college to be asked to join. You do have to, I think you do have to pay a fee. I, I think that's universal across community colleges. But I will, I will say, do research into your community college to make sure um, how, how to join and, and what are the requirements to join. But again, um, for PTK members, it is stackable. I will say you can see here, so I'm just reading some of the requirements for, for this, but um, it's $2,000 for up to two years. You have to have at least 30 transferable credits, so 3.5 GPA. And then you also have to make sure that you are coming directly from a two-year community college. The scholarship, I, I will also talk about this one app. It's our scholarship portal, but that's a lot of those applications on one app, PTK included, uh, the deadline is March 6. We do require proof of PTK membership, so you do need to email that to our email. And then you can read more about this, so I, I, I won't take up too much of your time, but we do offer scholarships as well for PTK All-State and PTK All-USA Academic Team. So again, if you have any questions about those, pl please go to this website, kind of read. This is another one that we have, Roy J. Carver Scholarship uh, Program. You can kind of read some of the requirements here for that. And then 
the last one I will talk about is one app. One app is a, here we go. So on this screen, you'll want to go to university scholarships and then you can go to one app. One app is a scholarship portal that we have at Iowa State. It's was created as simply, simply as a, a place where are all the different scholarships throughout campus. So we have we have different colleges at Iowa State. So we have like the business, so Ivy College of Business, we have College of Engineering, College of Ag and Life Sciences, College of uh, Human and Health Sciences. We have um, the College of Design and College of LAS, so Liberal Arts and Sciences. So we have all of those. They each have their own like scholarship team. They all have their own like scholarships. And so before it was kind of like, hunting and pecking to try to find them. Now we have a scholarship portal that you can go to. Um, they're all in one place. So I will say for one app, you can actually start applying for scholarships. You do not have to accept your offer to apply for those scholarships. You just have to be admitted. So you just have to have the um, offer of admission in order to apply for these scholarships. They open um, October 3rd, I believe this year. And so though they're open right now for fall of 2025, they, the spring 2025 scholarship deadlines were last spring. So they're the same. So as for the fall, there, there is still, I would still recommend going on to one app and just seeing if there's any scholarships. I will say, I believe there's still an engineering scholarship um, for spring 2025 entry term uh, students. So you can always go on one app, see if there's any scholarships there. But those are ones that you have to apply for. The ones that I mentioned on the previous page, the transfer achievement, transfer success, transfer expedition, those are all ones that are based on your credits and your transfer GPA. So we will pull that from your transcripts that you sent us. So there's no additional scholarship application that you have to, to do for those. When will we receive acceptance letters for fall 2025? It depends. So it really, honestly, it makes, um, so it's going to depend on when we got all of your documentation. So um, it generally takes about, it could take up to three weeks for you to receive that. If you have not gotten a response in that time, I would recommend reaching out to us. Um, my background is medical sciences, so I didn't take any. So with math classes, you will have to take what's called Alex. It's a math placement test before you do, before you register for classes. And so the math placement test is really a way for us to be able to place you in a math class that you would be successful in. So uh, I don't know the answer to that question. It's gonna be based on how you do um, on Alex. And, and I will say, um, there's like modules where you can kind of brush up on, on math, um, but, and you can take it multiple times. Um, do scholarships, do scholarships, oh. do these scholarships work for international students? International students are different. So, um, international students have their own set of scholarships. They are on our website, you'll just instead of clicking, instead of clicking transfer awards, you would just click um, transfer merit awards and you'll go through that way. So they have transfer students. I will say that I actually don't work with uh, international students. So I work with um, um, US domestic students. If you are an international student, you can reach out to our international team. Um, their email address is just intl ADM at iastate.edu. It's on our website if you if you want to reach out to them. Do scholarships wait until after the deadline to award them or do they process as they're submitted? So your financial aid package will be generated in right now, we anticipate April. And so that will include your scholarship. So you won't know until your financial aid award.
There is no deadline to, to submit applications for the spring of 2025. I will say um, when it comes to spring of 2025, people are already registering for classes. And so I would say, and, and the other thing too, is that spring 2025 starts in January. So we're almost at the end of October. I would recommend doing it as soon as possible because it may take up to three weeks for us to get to, or to render a admission decision. So I would do it as soon as possible so we can get your your application and be able to uh, give you a decision. Do I need to take all the modules in the Alex if I got in there? Um, I think you just need the, I, I don't know what the, the scores for, um, Alex are, um, you can talk with your academic advisor. So what I will say is you can, when you do your, when you do Alex, um, that will be sent to your academic advisor and then your academic advisor will be able to place you. So, um, Matt, I, I have a feeling if you're already at the point of Alex, you probably have already done orientation, which means that your your next step is probably to talk with an academic advisor. So that would be a question for your academic advisor. And then, yeah, so we do have... Um, with that, it's just a policy that we have that if you do military service after you are a or after high school, you would be considered a a transfer student. One reason is that when you do military service, you actually often you will get what's called a joint service transcript. And that will be um, so that's through I think it's like the Army and Navy, maybe Marines. I know Air Force has their own. So they have the community college of the Air Force. And so they have a transcript too. So when you do military service, you technically will get a, a transcript. Um, so to my knowledge, that's, that's probably the reason why you would be considered a transfer student. So Ethan, I, depending upon if you are spring 2025 and you need to register for classes, I would recommend to you'll have to send two transcripts. You'll have to request your school to send us two official transcripts. One right now where it has your, your classes and so you can register for spring and then one when you get done with those classes. Or the other thing is you could always um, wait until those classes are done. But I will say December, you know, you are waiting. And so at that point, a lot of people, a lot, some of the classes may be filled um, people would have already registered for current students at least would have registered for classes. You will have to take Alex if you, so if you took it out of your community at, at another college and it's been, it will be less than a year. So say you took it in August, let's go back. You took it in August, you're coming to Iowa State in January. You would not have to, to my knowledge, I don't think you would have to take Alex. Um, if you took it in July and you plan on coming to Iowa State in the next August, you would have to take it. So it's a one year. Um, if it's been less than one year from the time of you taking it to the time that you start at Iowa State, um, you wouldn't have to take that. I will say our we did change systems uh, recently, and so that may be different. So it's going to be up to your academic advisor, but... Um, I will say Alex is also for students who will need math classes at Iowa State. So if you completed all your math classes, you would not have to take Alex. All right, I'm gonna hold for a couple seconds to make sure no one else has questions. I know we're kind of, we're getting six minutes away from, from seven. Thank you so much for all the all the great questions. Um, I appreciate your engagement. And the other thing too, if you are interested in any other kind of webinars, like any topics that you wanna want me to go over, please let me know. 
Um, if, if at all possible, if I can bring in like transfer partner, campus partners, if you have questions about, uh, about anything like that, um, I can also see if I can arrange that. Anything to, to help, uh, help you understand the process a little bit better. Okay. I think I waited long enough. Perfect. Thank you all again for, for uh, taking time out of your day to be here and have a good rest of your evening. All right. Bye.